Hi, I'm Joel. This is a video tutorial using Roland's Xenology Pro software synth. Uh, and we're going to make this Psytrance bass sound. Or well, without those octaves. And with the triplet feel here. So make sure your tempo is set to around 135 or you could go really low like 120 if you wanted. Or even lower, 100. Or if you want you can go crazy and go like 150. But I like 135. Alright so the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have initial tone. So click the name there and make sure all is selected on the left and the right and then hit initial tone here. And the default is going to sound like this. So we'll go in and we're going to make it a saw wave. So make sure either partial one is selected or oscillator here. VA virtual analog and make sure saw is selected. And we'll turn it on mono to make sure only one note can play at a time. First thing we'll take the release off the amp envelope. So click amp up here and take the release off. So that way as soon as the MIDI clip uh, is, sorry, as soon as the MIDI note ends, the sound will end as well. Okay, so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward this one. We're going to select Moog filter and 18 or 24, you'll hear the difference. Let's go 24 for now. We'll bring the cutoff all the way down and we're going to add some amp envelope to us. Uh, sorry, some envelope to the filter. So bring that first note across and the second note up and bring the envelope depth all the way up for now. This will be fine tuned to, to taste. So let's have a listen. So bring that decay down really short. So yeah, that's that's the basis of it there. You can already hear that that's starting to sound like a Psytrance bass line. We can have the cutoff velocity sensitive applied to the filter as well. So if you bring that up a little bit, with these little velocity uh, curves, uh, velocity settings that I have here, the higher the velocity, the op more open the cutoff will be, and the lower the velocity, the lower the cutoff will be. So that's, again, this is just a taste. that decay down a little bit. Just play around with the envelope depth here and the cutoff and the actual envelope itself. And you can fine tune the cutoff velocity sensitive as well. Yeah, that's sounding nice. Uh, we can add a little bit of analog feel, um, so adding a lot will sound like this. You can't really hear it, but it's just adding some slight detuning to the sound, so just a little bit of that will be just some subtle variants that you probably won't pick up audibly, but it's there. There we go, so now we could do a couple of different things. If you like the sound of that, you could pretty much just whack a compressor on there and call it done. Um, but I was playing around before, and if we actually turn the whole thing up an octave and play around with this fat control here, the fat control just emphasizes the lower frequency range of the sound. So if we play around with that, if we move it either positive or negative, it will bring the whole overall sound down. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. And we'll increase the wave gain on that so it's a bit louder. Uh, be careful, each step on this doubles the volume. You can play around with the pulse width if you like. But we want to keep it nice and bright. Alright, so there you could pretty much call it done if you wanted. Uh, or you could add another partial on top, so let's activate the second partial. We'll make it a, actually you know what we'll do, we'll go into pro edit mode here and we'll go utility, copy, tone partial one, utility, paste, tone partial two. So now we're going to have two of the same thing. So just partial one, just partial two. But we'll go into the pitch, uh, pitch setting here for partial two and we'll bring it up an octave. 
and they're listening to them together. It gives us a pretty fat sound, but we'll bring the wave gain down on the second partial. So without it, and with it. We could also change the fat control on that one, so it's got less of the low frequency, and it's more of just the sitting in the highs. So just soloing the second partial. Listening together. That's sounding pretty cool. And then we can use the master cutoff filter here to change the overall filter cutoff. I said it a few times, but you could probably call it done there. But what we can do, if we want, we could add a compressor on it. So click MFX down here, comp slash limiter compressor. Just bring the threshold down and the post gain up a little bit. We kind of want that short attack. So it captures that first transient at the start of the sound. So off, on. Let's bring that threshold down a little bit. Just don't be confused with louder is better with a compressor. Make sure you're actually using the compressor for what it's there for to even out the volume levels. Sounding cool. So a little trick uh, that uh, Tom Cosm taught me. Shout out to Tom. Uh, I learned most of my Ableton music production stuff from him. Uh, we can go add a filter delay here, disable the L and R section and just have the L, individual L and the individual R and have the time on one millisecond and six milliseconds and then try to play around with the filter volume. Uh, sorry, filter frequency. And that just, that just adds a lot of width to our sound. So without it, it's just going to sit directly in the center. And then on uh, if with the filter delay, it'll sit on the sides. But what we can do is we can group that and then have another chain and have this as the highs, high slash side. And this is the bass slash mid. On the high slash side section, we'll bring the dry set, um, setting all the way down. So it's only playing these filtered side sections. We'll just solo that. And then in the middle here, if we solo that, that's going to have the whole set, uh, whole sound in the middle. So together. But what we'll do is on this bass slash mid section chain here, we're just going to filter out some of those highs. So then if we listen to them, to them together, so we've got just the more bass frequencies in the middle and on the sides is just more of the highs. Now listening with the kick. We could take it one step further and let's open up our clip, uh, our Xenology again and we're going to close that master effects, get the zoom back on. If we go back to the filter and we, so we can change this cutoff key follow. So the higher you go up in the pitch, the more open the filter will be. If you set this positively uh, and then the lower you go in the pitch, it'll close the filter. And then the opposite for, uh, if you go into a negative value. So the higher, if you're in negative value, the higher key that you play will close the filter more and the lower the key that you play will open the filter more. But we want it positively just subtly for this one. Let's just go with partial one so we can get it sounding right. And let's add some octaves in here. So let's just have the accent and note up an octave. So let's grab that one, that one, that one, and that one. And now if we bring that up here. So when it's playing that octave, the higher note there, um, it's going to open the filter. And of course, play around with the envelope depth, the decay time, the sort of start time for the envelope and the cutoff velocity sensitive. Let's bring that second partial in here and we'll just make sure that we have the same, well, it's not essential, but we can add the same, approximately the same cutoff key follow. Just going to bring the overall level of the second partial down. So hit AMPQ and level here. It's going to go back into filter here and just change the cutoff key follow a little bit. There we go. 
go. So we can listen to that without the fil- um, compressor. And with the compressor. Very subtle difference there. So yeah, that's how you make a Psytrance bass sound. All right, so now that we've got our drums and our bass sorted out, let's add a little Psychance squelchy psychedelic sort of thing over the top. So you get a new MIDI track with a new instance of Xenology Pro. Make sure initial tone is selected. So click the name. Make sure all is on the left, all is on the right. Hit initial tone here. And then by default. So I'm going to get rid of master effects there. Zoom back in. So we can use either a square wave or a saw wave for this one. They both have um, nice attributes. Or a square. By the way, I just have a Novation Circuit tracks on the side here for my note uh, input and knobs as well, which we'll get to in a sec. So add mono, make sure mono's on. So pretty straightforward this one. We can go into the filter here uh, and hit a bandpass filter, bring the cutoff down, put it on 24 decibel slope, bring the resonance up. So it's going to sound like this. It's going to bring the wave gain up on the oscillator. Again, be careful because it doubles the volume each step. So you can use any delay plugin you want or reverbs, but the, um, if you hit MFX here in Xenology Pro, click here, down the bottom, delay, mid-side delay. It sounds pretty cool. So if we go back to the filter, I'm just going to turn that master effects section off. Like The master effects will still be on, but the window will be hidden. Menu, zoom. So now if we play around with the cutoff control. That's sounding pretty cool as it is. You could probably call it at that if you wanted, but let's go into the pitch envelope here. And we're going to bring the first knob out here, keeping make sure the level is still on zero, as you can see in the top left here. And then the second node here, bring up. So that's going to have the uh, pitch being sent uh, to the envelope with a slight attack and a slight decay once we bring the envelope depth up. And then you can just play around with the attack and decay. <laughs> And then when we play around with the filter, cut off. Double check that resonance setting, make sure it's not too much. Or you could have more. Let's go back into the oscillator here. If we have a saw wave. But if we may bring it back to a, um, actually no, we can play around with the pulse width. But I find that on a square wave, the pulse width has a better sort of effect. So if we have a hardware controller, I can just right click a parameter, learn MIDI CC, move a knob on my controller, and then now I can control that with my MIDI controller. Uh, I have a done I have done a video on MIDI mapping and MIDI controlling in Xenology Pro, so check that one out. So if we have the cutoff set to a knob like so, we can go into the oscillator and we can right click, learn MIDI CC, and move a different knob, and then have that control the pulse width. So now listening to those two together. You can add a bit of analog feel if we like to give it some detune. Some really subtle detune. Maybe unison if you wanted. It's not your pretty traditional sound though. It's going to bring the master volume down a little bit. And then from there, you can pretty much just. Cre- uh, so I'm going to have this as the. Um, SQL squelch source English and then I'm going to trade another audio track command T rename that one squelch audio so now if we have them both uh, record armed when I hit play I can just jam on it really no I need to send I need to take input from squelch source that's better so let's try again
So if you want, you could go into that audio track now and add a saturator on there just to give it a bit more width, a uh, bit more uh, presence, sorry. So there you go. That's how you make a Psytrance squelch sound in Roland's Xenology Pro software synth. Thanks for watching.